Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Uh, got a radio show. Yep. Yep. Sometimes that's all I can say. <laughs> yep. Man. How far I've come is really unbelievable. But you know, I finally figured it out, man. God allowed uh, me to have the life I've had so that I can become experienced at so many different things. And in this experience, when I'm talking and sharing with people, I will be able to relate to a lot of different circumstances. Not exact, but just the circumstances, you know. You know, if a person comes to me and they say, man, I've been down and out. Okay, well, I know what that is. Man, I, I didn't I didn't have any direction. Okay, got that, been there. Man, at one point in time, man, I just kept piling mistake on top of mistake. Okay. So, you know, uh, I think what I'm trying to say to everybody is when you're going through life and life is dealing the cards that it deals, I want you to understand that life deals everybody these cards. The disappointment card, the setback card, the failure card, the mishap card, the unexpected misery card. Everybody going to get the grief card. Everybody going to get the rash of bad decision card. Everybody going to get them. Understand that going in, that everybody is going to get these cards. Is how you play them, though. You know, uh, from time to time, one more time, it's how you play them. Uh, you know, from time to time when I'm watching TV, I, I love to watch the uh, World Series of Poker. I like watching poker tournaments on TV because it, it's it's really weird, re, re, weird what's happened to sport to to poker. They're actually trying to call it a sport, you know, and it's the everyday guy that doesn't have to be athletically inclined to anything, who has a shot of winning a title if they play their cards right. The best poker players in the world don't have the best hands. They just make the best plays. I've seen guys win a hand with nine, two in their hand. That's nothing. And win their hand because they knew the bluff. They knew the odds. They calculated risk. They made the stakes higher than the other person was willing to pay. They gave off the illusion that they had something when in actuality they had nothing. So what I... What I enjoy about poker and watching it is that these people, these people here, play the hand they dealt. And it ain't always a good hand. But it ain't whether your hand is good. And it ain't whether you're going to get dealt bad cards or not. Because you're going to get dealt some bad cards. Everybody ain't finna get two bullets in their hand. You ain't finna get two aces when you get dealt. Uh, You know, when you play a draw poker. Some of your cards going to be nothing. But you got to turn that nothing into something. So when you get dealt these cards in life, it ain't the fact that you getting, keep getting them dealt. I was talking with a young person yesterday, and uh, we were talking, and we keep having the same conversation over and over and over, and they could not understand why they were not moving forward. But I said, you don't understand. Every time we talk, we have the exact same conversation. It is simply because you keep getting your cards and you playing them the same way. See, until you make a conscientious, uh, conscious decision to do something different, the results will continue to be the same. See, here's, here's, here's the way this works. When you're dealt the disappointments in life, it's how you handle the disappointments that determine the outcome and who you are. Because everybody going to be disappointed. Everybody going to lose a loved one. Everybody going to make a bad decision. Everybody going to wake up one morning and have done something they regretted. Everybody going to get caught at the wrong time. Every, everybody going to make a mistake. It ain't just you. It is how you play your cards when they get dealt to you that determine who you are. Now, how do I play my cards better? First of all, it's a mindset. Quit looking at everything as just the end when it happens to you. Oh, Lord, woe is me. No, everybody got your circumstances somewhere. 
It ain't oh, woe is me. It's hold on, man. Okay, let me play this out to see how God done connected this to something else. See, as soon as a person have a setback, what's the first thing a lot of people do? They go straight negative. I can't seem to get a break. I can't seem to move forward. Hold on, man. Do you realize this could be connected to something? See, you got to understand, man, that this thing is all connected, that you're not having these mishaps and these spills and accidents and falls for no reason. It's so you can become experienced at them. So when he takes you to the next level, when it happens again, you have no how and how to handle it. If you keep throwing yourself off the cliff every time something happens, you're just going to be a cliff diver. Man, stop tripping yourself out. I was talking to this young person. I kept saying, and, and you know what they tried to tell me? I'm trying to stay positive, but the people around here, they just killing that. Oh, I see. So when you learn something and you know something, you don't take ownership of it. You allow other people to come into what you know and believe and shake it loose from you. I don't care who you are, you're not doing me like that. Here's the deal. I have a gift that was given to me from God. That is the gift of comedy. That's what I've done. I've made the bulk of my living on that skill set right there. There are comedians who are supposedly friends of mine who I've worked with who get around in huddles with one another and they say, man, Steve really ain't funny. I don't see what they be laughing at. He ain't funny to me. He wasn't the funniest king to me. Excuse me. You're irrelevant in this conversation because irregardless as to how you feel about me, there are people think that I'm knocked down, kill over funny. But more importantly, I own the gift that God gave to me. I take ownership of his blessing because you don't think it's so. You ain't taking that from me. Stop letting people steal your joy. Stop letting people take what you're supposed to know. Look, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kind person at heart. Man, you ain't nothing. Now, you sitting here going, man, I guess I ain't. What, what you tripping for? You are a kind person. Own that. Take ownership of it. Stop letting... Things God has given you be taken away from others. The devil is a cold player, and he got cold players working for him, just shaking, just taking stuff from you. You know, I'm a hard worker. I really am intelligent. You stupid. Man, I thought I was a hard worker, man. They came in here and said I was stupid, man. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, what? Excuse me. You're a very bright person. Hey, y'all, take ownership. When God gives you something, blesses you with a gift, a talent, a skill set, a mindset, own it. Don't let people come in here and take it from you, man. Okay, I probably shouldn't have went there. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, what more can I say than this? It's a great day today. Certainly, you must appreciate the opportunity in being a part of it. I know I do. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for this day. Grant me the strength to endure it and the vision to accept all of its capabilities and possibilities. Let the church say amen. 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 Amen, amen again. Amen again. <laughs> Shirley Strawberry Carla Pharrell with the only ones here. Mouth of the South is in the background. Her microphone is entirely too loud. <laughs> in commercial breaks, she talks and sounds like Sister Odell with a megaphone. We are here today, gathered. I normally ask Junior what's going on, but Junior's out this week. Mm-hmm. We, not, we don't say why he out. He just out. Yeah, he didn't tell us. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just out. Yeah. Oh, hey, okay. Steve, yeah. I do have a question. It, it, because um, what Cheryl Lee Ralph did last night on her Emmy acceptance speech, it kind of um, it kind of sparked something. Yeah, yeah a Monday, Monday night. night. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. You know what? You talk about success and you talk about failure and all that. I want to know from you, was there ever a point in your career, uh, and now that you've made it looking back, did you ever think about giving up? Was there a time when you said, forget it, I'm not ever, I'm not doing this? Oh, absolutely. Really, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've never uh, heard you boy, say I've that. I've never boy. heard that either. Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. really. I mean, you know, I was just... You know, uh, I was talking to Deion Sanders about this a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a turn back moment. Everybody, mm-hmm. in every goal you set that's of value, 
Mm-hmm. Everybody has that moment where you go, oh, forget it. It could really? be simple as, oh, forget, I ain't doing this. This, 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 this all there, too much going on. Right, I'm gonna stop this right here. Or mm-hmm. you, it gets more serious. I, I just can't take no more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got, I got to go do something else. Oh man, I've given it my all, mm. and I'm yeah. just mm-hmm. not seeing it, man. I, right, I'm done, just done. Yeah. Man, that's it, man. I try, I gave it my all. I've had that moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh. everybody has a turn back moment. Mm-hmm. But what you have to do when you have those days is just make it to tonight. Just okay. see it through to tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go to mm-hmm. bed mm-hmm. and wake up again. Mm-hmm. If God mm-hmm. wakes you up, mm-hmm. that is the sign that he ain't to through keep, with you yet. Keep going. Okay. See, All right. you can have reached your limit. Mm-hmm. You can have reached the end of your road, mm-hmm. but God has no limit, and God right. has no end of rope. So we are designed to deal with twenty-four hours a day, and He breaks those twenty-four hours up into day and night. Mm-hmm. Night is so you can recuperate and recover to face another day. So when you have that give up moment, if just make it to nightfall and go to bed and wake up again. And then you'll see the dawning of a new day as a new opportunity and even a new mindset. That's that's a great that's great advice, Steve. All right. Thank you for that. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it's on you to run that prank back. What you got? Let's run that prank back. This is the prank. <laughs> the prank. Can I paint your wife naked? <laughs> Run it, cat. <laughs> you love that part. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I wish to speak with a Mr. please. Hello, sir. Um, my name is Sebastian. I am with the um, Art Institute. And I wanted to give you a call about... Um, I have a huge showing coming up where I'm going to be displaying my portfolio and all of my drawings within it, but I have one drawing that I'm looking to display that I have not put on canvas yet, and I'm looking to take something uh, uh, of essence to put on canvas, and I wanted to call you about getting permission. Well, wait, hold on, dog. Just to stop you right now, I don't don't do that, all right? I'm not a model. That's not my profession, so not waste your time no more, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and go. uh, Mr. Mr. I don't think you understand that my showing is going to have some very important people there. Okay. I am, like I said before, with the Art Institute. Okay, yeah, but like I said, dog, I don't do that. That's not me. I mean, dog, I, I hate it. You know, how, what, were you just calling folks up? You a solicitor or something? I mean, y'all just randomly picking out folks and trying to trying to get them to, to model up? Man, I ain't sir, trying to break your heart. Sir, 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 Mr. No, I'm not just randomly calling people. I, I actually have done research in order to get your number. What what I'm doing is I, I'm not calling you as far being a model that I'm going to portray on canvas. But you have something far more greater visually that I would like what? to behold on canvas. Now, you're married to your wife is. Oh. Am I correct? Oh, whoa, 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 dog. No, for real. Who is this? Seriously. Uh, I mean, because like, how'd you get my number? How, no, my how'd name? you get my number? Because you're talking about my wife and stuff? Well, Sir, my how name, you know my wife? My name is Sebastian. I am with. Art Institute. What I'm trying to do is capture and, and, and immortalize the beauty of essence on canvas. Okay, yo, for real though, you you just can't. You you, you don't talk about my wife, all right? So no, I, sir, I, I, I'm not I'm not call, calling in a negative manner towards your wife. I want to I want to immortalize her and and capture her on canvas. The okay. beauty that she beholds. I've seen your wife several times. You guys reside. In whoa, whoa, whoa! You see my wife? Wait, where well, you I, see I, my wife at? What? Why you? Why I, I, you? Why you watching my wife? I've seen her. She shops on 125th Street in Harlem. I've seen her so many times there, and she holds all the beauty that an artist would like to put on canvas. Uh, like I said before, I have a huge showing in May. You're welcome to come out as well. Yeah, There's going to uh, be so many important people there, but I want to to call and get permission from you about painting your wife. No, you ain't got that permission, Playboy. You just can't. You just can't go around following my wife and, and, and trying to immortalize her, whatever you just said, all right? So, Sir, no. I, I, but I, I would like to let you know, I, I have taken the liberty myself. I have painted your wife's head. 
What? Want- Yo, you have lost your damn mind. You can't be just walking around here painting folks' head. <laughs> you got to get permission for that. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Yo, you are <laughs> crazy. You don't understand. Your wife holds the essence that every artist wants to. I don't care what <laughs> she holds. You can't be going around painting folks' heads. <laughs> wrong with you? Sir, that's the reason why I'm calling, trying to get permission from you. I, Sebastian, want to put your wife on canvas because she holds the essence that every artist wants to behold. She mortalized the beauty of canvas. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, dog. Hold up, dog. Hold up, dog. You telling me you walking around my Harlem painting my wife's head? What kind sir, of is that? What the are you doing, dude? Sir, Yo, you, sir, you... I'm only trying to complete my no. portfolio. I oh, no. You your portfolio. Here, listen to this. If I see my wife's head anywhere, I don't care, newspaper, magazine, I don't care where, billboard, wherever, yo, I'm going to find your and I'm going to whoop your Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm going to sue the you. You understand that? Sir, I don't want to have a duel with you, sir. A duel? What the is a duel? What the is a duel? What the is a duel? In fact, what the name is Sebastian? What kind of name is that Sebastian? Sir, all I want to do is paint your wife in her rawest and purest form. Oh. That's what all the f- does raw and purest form mean? What, what the f- do you want? Seriously. I want to paint your wife. I I want to paint her in the nude. Are you out your f- mind? F- f- no, 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 no. F- 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 that's what you should do. Tell me where you at. You want to paint something? I'll give you something to f- paint. Tell me where you at. 125th, meet me 125th, that's what's up, I want to whoop your ass, meet me, meet me, paint me, paint me, you out your mind talking about you want to paint my wife in the nude, I'm going to take them brushes and stick them up your Mr. she holds the essence that every person should I don't give a what she holds, I don't give a you be out your mind for asking me some like that. Sir, I must ask you, do you think that you are the only person that has seen your wife in the nude? Surely there's been men before you that have seen her in the nude. Oh, that. Who the f- are you? Hey, my wife ain't no mother. You call my wife a f- Is that what you say? Are you calling my wife a f-? F- you? I want to paint no. your wife in the beauty that she be- f- on canvas, What sir. the f- did you not understand? I just said f- you. No. F- I told you, meet me on the corner of 125th. And claim power. I got one more thing. I just want to say to you. What? Say it. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy. <laughs> what? What? This is this is nephew. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Oh. Oh. Oh man, yo man, yo yeah, man. yo. Oh. I was moving furniture in here, dude. <laughs> I mean, you got me, dog. Oh, man, y'all got me. It was Sebastian, sir. Was oh, yeah, the yeah dude. Where the <laughs> you get Sebastian, bro? <laughs> I, I was about to whoop y'all <laughs> and Sebastian's <laughs> <laughs> I was to paint brushes, and I was about to paint all of with your <laughs> <laughs> Let me get one more thing from you, man. What is yes. the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest. Radio show in the land. Yeah, man. It's Steve Harvey in the morning show, baby. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Black Twitter has been less than kind since the Queen's death, and D.L. Hughley spoke on it. Um, a, a brothel employee in Vegas has a special office has a special offer for the Las Vegas Raiders, and Kanye West says he's done, done working with companies. All right, we'll get into all that at the top mm-hmm. of the hour, like I said. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Rosie in Kalamazoo writes that last week, my brother-in-law asked me to keep my sister's anniversary gift at my house. The lady across the street told my sister that her husband was at my house. My sister asked me about it and I told her he dropped something off. It's all a bit confusing to her. Do I spoil the surprise and tell her the truth? (laughs) No, just hold tight. Yeah. 
It'll all come out in the wash. Now, I know it sounds a little shaky right now, yeah. but it's all for a good reason. And good yeah. for her. Good for that nosy-ass neighbor that's going to get know. it. Good for her for dipping and believing now. Mm-hmm. You can tell, man, Rosie. You just got to let people just go on and feel how they want to feel. Yeah. They did and nothing wrong. Just let the man surprise stay what it is. That's, that's why right. we don't like telling y'all nothing now. Because you can't hold damn water. <laughs> when you say y'all. <laughs> y'all. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> to the two that's on this show with me now. Y'all. <laughs> I love Rosie, though, because Rosie's not messy. I like that. She's not messy at all. <laughs> she does not want to be in any mess. Uh-uh. All right. Uh-uh. Moving on to uh, Kina in Shreveport. Kina says, um, I've been in a relationship with a man for five years, and he lives in another state. He wants me to visit him all of the time, and he never makes an effort to come spend time at my house. We would never see each other if I wasn't putting forth the effort. Should I stop going to visit him and see if he steps up? <laughs> yeah, I would. Five years? I mean, look, y'all, come on now, ladies. Let, let's let's look at this the right way. Mm-hmm. If you have no requirements on a man, mm-hmm. but then he gives you nothing you require, mm-hmm. what, what you tripping for? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I, I, I don't years. understand. Yeah, that's too. You long. know, it's little little bitty little Sunday school Bible verses. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto you. That's yeah, right. Yeah, just little bitty stuff. It's just mm-hmm. common courtesy. Yeah. yeah. Now, unless your house mm-hmm. is, is raggedy. <laughs> she didn't want, say that. She did I'm not just say saying, that. Maybe that's why she you just... don't want to come up here. <laughs> She just said he lives in another state and he won't visit her. That's all she said. That's all she has said. It had nothing to do with how her house looks. Maybe that's why he ain't coming up there. But she's driving for five years to another state to see this man. Girl, please. Stop. Uh-uh. Stop. All that mileage on your car and you, too. All right. Moving on. Next to the last one, Steve. Corinne and Yonkers says, I'm 55. And my beau is 59. He's a professor and I'm a nurse. We text during the day because we're both busy at work. Texting at night and on weekends is crazy since we just met and I'm trying to get to know him. Is he not interested in me? Hmm. Once again, (laughs) we do what you allow us to do. If you require a phone call, text that to him. Yeah. And then wait on your phone call. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then listen to me, ladies. Men are not mind readers. We stupid mm-hmm. when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Especially when if you want us to read your mind. You want a phone call? <laughs> Tell him that. That's yeah. all to it. Or <laughs> she, continue to text and find out you're just worth a text. You're not worth a yeah. phone. She thinks he's not interested at all. She, that, that could be true. Uh-huh. But you could easily find out by requiring some phone calls. And if you don't get them, he don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Men okay. do what, I tell you what, men do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, okay. that's a for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Pick up the phone if he doesn't. Mm. All right. Like you say, Steve, you got to require it. All right, Steve, this is our last one. This is from Spirit in Augusta. Spirit writes, I was going through my husband's phone while he was asleep, as usual, and I saw a text to his sister thanking her for loaning him $400. I talked to his sister several times that day, and she did not mention it. Should I call her and act like I know about it? $400? (laughs) Yes. $400. $400. Woo! That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Boy, Boy this, been, this divorce. <laughs> Are you for real right now? But isn't the <laughs> issue that she went through his phone? We, we both so know the issue, Carla. Right here. <laughs> That's the <laughs> issue. Know. Would you come on, you crazy going man? through his phone. Yeah. And all this here. Didn't you? So While he was his sleeping. Sister. Mm. And I'm going through his phone as usual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you do this. Right. If you go, so now, so now you're not While only looking for trouble, mm. 
mm-hmm. you are now mm-hmm. creating trouble. Right, a problem where there is none. Mm-hmm. A man borrowed four hundred dollars from his sister. You talk to his sister all day. She never mentioned it. Why would she? Yeah. Her brother asked her for four hundred. He gave four hundred. Right. She's not gonna so be now, so what nosy. narrative you want to spin? Oh, I go. I got it. So now you gonna spin it like this? So mm-hmm. what you do with the four hundred? Who did you spend um, four hundred on? Cause it show wasn't me. And you uh, right, yeah. it wasn't yeah. me. Yeah. But he didn't put I mean, that in the phone, though. Yeah, maybe it could be for... You never know what it's for. It doesn't have to be anything it's bad. Cash is non-traceable. <laughs> there are no receipts with cash. Mm-hmm. $400 buy a lot of Probably stuff in Victoria's Secret. So, oh. <laughs> Wait a minute now. So, so <laughs> you just you're made it worse. Husband. <laughs> well, made you know what? If she wants to create a narrative... And uh-huh. make up stuff by snooping in the man's phone. Then let me help you with it. Four hundred dollars yeah. is non-traceable, and you can buy a lot of stuff at Victoria's Secret for four hundred dollars. Now, that's what you wanted to find in the man's phone. There it is, CLO. Right. Now go on and right. wreck your marriage because he borrowed four hundred dollars from his sister. You talked to his sister, and his sister never mentioned it to you. Sister don't <laughs> probably don't even like you. That's why she gave you the four hundred because he didn't want to ask you for the four hundred. Uh-huh. He bought some cigars with it. What he did. Don't call her. (laughs) All right. All right. Thank you, CLO, I think. Uh, Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Queen Elizabeth II passed away on Thursday, last Thursday, at the age of 96. Black Twitter wasted no time calling out her legacy. While some chose to mourn her death, many folks decided to address the history of the British monarchy, which included colonialism and slavery. Uh, TMZ caught up with Dale Hughley, our friend, and uh, got his thoughts on the negative tweets and posts following the death of the Queen. Take a listen. She's uh, what, 96 years old. 96. So obviously she didn't have anything to do with slavery. I'm not saying that she didn't have uh, views that were problematic. Yeah. But at the end of her life, her, her race is over now. Yeah. Whatever she's done, she's gonna be judged for, right? Yeah. So I, I think that ultimately, it, it, I don't know. I don't see how somebody could claim the whole Christian uh, ideas and then want to punish somebody after they're gone. She's run her race. Whatever she did or didn't do, she's answered for now. Yeah. Wherever place she saved, saved up, heaven or hell, she's in it now. So. All I can do is be compassionate to the people that lost somebody they love. Well, I agree with what DL said. I don't mm-hmm. have much of an opinion, really, one way or the other. Uh, I didn't grow up in England. I didn't grow up in a monarchy. You know, I was never. You didn't? No, I never understood the whole <laughs> queen thing to begin with. Mm-hmm. And now her son, Charles, is the king. He just get to be that. Yeah, because he's, he's a, so yeah, he's, bloodline. He's, so he's you know, prepared I mean, for it his entire life, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen some monarchies work, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna go on over here and deal with this vote and this voting work for me. That's Unless right. I could That's go right. into a place where a monarchy has great family and, leadership and stuff like that. But in our democracy, you know, yeah. I mean, right. London, or UK got problems like everything else. So, and mm-hmm. racism. Mm-hmm. They got That's, crime. Yeah. They got Seriously. drugs. They got mm-hmm. racism. So. That's why Meghan Markle left. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> you they know, got it. So. Yeah. 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 I all will right. just say this, that Earl of Ottingham will be here to straighten out all of this after the 19th. Yeah, because that's where her funeral so, is. And he knows London. all the dark secrets. And we're going to finally know what was really going on at Buckingham Palace when Earl of Ottingham speaks okay. after mm-hmm. the final funeral. The funeral the alone. Bloody good. Nowadays. Mm-hmm. Some James Brown All right. type funeral stuff. But, you know. Why is the Godfather <laughs> a soul in this conversation? Well, because I thought the funeral was here. the other day, but y'all told me she died in Scotland, and that, that was the part they was having in Scotland. And yes. then the other part going to be on the 19th. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. They kept James mm-hmm. out a long time. Yeah. All right, That's we're all moving I'm on. Saying. Thank you. And, and I uh, cared about James. <laughs> I was actually involved in the fight as to where he should be. Thank I was you. against propping him up in the front yard, though. I was against that. <laughs> in sports news, well, kind of kind of sports news, sort of sports news. A uh, sex worker in Las Vegas. Oh, wow, we're switching gears. A sex worker in Las Vegas is offering her services to the Las Vegas Raiders football players and staff members at a discounted rate. The sex worker's name is Ariel Ganja. Um, 
who works at the Chicken Ranch Brothel. And according to TMZ Sports, Ariel is reportedly offering a 50% off special to the Raiders for her special services throughout the 2022-23 football season as a, quote, thank you for bringing excitement to the city. The services that she's offering include the free limo. Her name is Ariel Ganja. Ganja or Ganja. <laughs> yeah. Do, why? Why you ask? No, go ahead. I oh, okay. <laughs> Who she think? The whole football team? Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> and staff. <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you what her services will be. She's going to offer um, private um, uh, free limo rides to the chicken ranch with a private entrance to a bungalow for added secrecy. And she's hoping to become, these are her hopes. She has dreams too, okay? Uh, she she wants to be the official sex worker to the Las Vegas Raiders. So to answer your question, yes, Steve. Uh, you know prostitution is legal in some areas of Nevada. So there you go. That's for the now, Raiders, though. The sad thing about this uh-huh. is it's, they going, some, some of them going down there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh-huh, for sure. Especially when you said that staff. Uh huh. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> the football players and the staff members, and it's, the rate is going to be discounted, so it's a win-win. Is that what you're saying for everybody? But let me Man. tell you, I just <laughs> left Vegas and I saw that stadium. The rate is nice. <laughs> they this have is la- nice. <laughs> they have laid it out for the Raiders, so you knew this was coming, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So knew that's her goal. To be known as the official sex worker to the Las Las Vegas Raiders. So there you go. Uh, Kanye is back in the news. In an interview, uh, Steve, with Bloomberg News, Kanye said he's done working with big companies. It's time for him to, quote, go at it alone. Uh, Kanye said, it's fine. I made the companies money. The companies made me money. We created ideas that will change apparel forever. Now it's time for Ye to make the new industry. No more companies standing in between me and the audience. Kanye referred to the companies as his new baby mamas and said, quote, I guess we're going to have to co-parent these 350s, which are shoes he created with Adidas, and that uh, that contract ends in 2026. So they still have that together until that year. Yeah, I'm not mad so, at that. Mm-hmm, I rock mm-hmm. my Yeezys. Yeah, I li- yeah. I like my Yeezys. Uh-huh. And Kanye has a yeah. point. And it was wrong for them to copy him and, and not give mm-hmm. him credit and and yeah. close him out of the board meetings and all of that. Yep. I'm going to just, I'm gonna just you, Kanye. wait mm-hmm. and see what Kanye do tomorrow. Cause this all could go <laughs> this could all could change. Yeah, yes. I, you know, I don't want to really, like. He's a flip-flopper. <laughs> co-sign this yet. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the fence right now. Yeah, I'm going to just wait. (laughs) All right, coming up in 20 minutes after, someone's got a big crush on you, Steve. She said it on national TV. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Sherry Shepard, congratulations to Sherry Shepard. Love her. She debuted her new talk show on Monday, and Candy Burris was her very first guest. Sherry also had a very spe- special virtual guest. Her name is Miss Loreen Harmon. Miss Loreen is 97 years old. She's a grandmother who went viral on TikTok after she rode around Walmart in a motorized cart with a megaphone in her hand shouting that she was looking for a sugar daddy. I, I heard they had a sale on sugar daddies. Mm, <laughs> That's mm. what she was saying. So, <laughs> Lorraine uh, was one of the people that gave Sherry a life. She gave her life. Sherry loved this. Uh, and she also gave uh, Sherry some advice on how to have a successful talk show. Take a listen. I just have to ask you, because I've been asking everybody, do you have any advice for me? Yes, just keep being your lovely, funny self. It's contagious. Okay. And, but be sure and uh, let's try to have more uh, sugar daddies in the audience. Okay. You know what? Lorene, I will make that when we have our next meeting. I am going to make sure that happens for you. So I okay. want to say, do you have anybody that you'd like to see on my show? Uh, you know, I have a crush on Steve Harvey, right? So uh, you, you, you and him, y'all would be uh, over uh, hilarious. So. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> she likes you. She's feeling you, Steve. I'll be dead. Miss Lorraine. It's always Harvey. somebody grandmama feeling <laughs> me. You know, Lord, mm. I've waited all my life for you to turn me into something. And I do appreciate the fact that you have done what I asked. Mm. The timing of it, though. She's just 97. Shirley, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm mm. listening. It's the timing of what the Lord gave me that I'm uh, questioning. <laughs> you're questioning Why, the Lord? Lord? <laughs> Why could you not have given me this when I was 30? <laughs> Why People you wait till I'm 65? Now mm. everybody want me 95. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> What you gonna You're do just, about Miss Lorene's crush? Yeah. So, what you Listen, gonna do? I ain't gotta worry about Miss Lorene. Man, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave Miss. She want a sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and and so don't cute. you fit that bill? You fit that. Marjorie that has all the money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sugared out. All my sugar gone. I'm just daddy. You just daddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she does have a crush on you. Cute. She was cute as pie. She was. And congratulations again to uh, Sherry Shepard, uh, yes. you know, making her debut. That was a dream of hers. It came true. To always, She always wanted her own talk show. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we have a question for Sister Odell. Sister Odell Uh-oh. in the building. Speaking of 97-year-old, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In a promotional video for a coffee company, 81-year-old Martha Stewart had on an apron with nothing under it, okay? This is while she was just holding a simple cup of coffee. Uh, She was nude under the apron. She was naked under there. Martha said, oh, hi there. I'm just enjoying the natural flavor of pumpkin spice from Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and nothing else, literally, okay? Martha's 1.7 million Uh, Social media followers praised her for her creativity and for having an incredible 81-year-old body. She used to be a model way back in the day, and she still does look really good. She does. Uh, She she looks really good. So uh, Sister Odell just happens to be here today. Oh, really? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. She popped in. Popped in. Yes, yes, I did. Mm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sister Odell. Hello, Shirley. How is you today? I'm lovely, lovely, lovely. Good, Thank good, you. Good, good, good. Carly, hey, sweetie. Hey, Sister Odell, my favorite. How are you? Mm-hmm. Mouth for the South, Miss Monica. She's waiting. How's your mama doing? She catfishing any? She said, Tell yes, I'm going to come down there and sit on the porch with her soon. We'll be together. <laughs> what is y'all talking about today? Well, Sister Odell, you know, we, we just did the story about Martha Stewart, who's 81. and Who? Uh, Martha Stewart. Oh, Martha okay. Stewart, yeah. You, the white woman that went to jail? Y- yes, ma'am. Yeah, a while ago, okay. yes. Uh, but the she has a show woman. now with Snoop Dogg, yes. Got out and just thriving. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Most yes. black people get out and end up going back in. They don't do yeah. quite as well. Mm, recidivism, mm. yeah. All you right, call so, it what? It's recidivism, yeah, when they go well, back Well, no, in. I said they go back to prison, Shirley. Yes, then nobody ma'am. said nobody was going to come in there and visit them. <laughs> that's not what she said. Uh, that's not, it's, it's, that's what that word means. Anyway, yeah, okay. So, so I wanted to ask you, since Martha Stewart is doing it, she's nude under her apron selling she coffee. She's nude under her apron? Yeah, selling coffee. Uh-huh. Mm, she's in a coffee commercial, yeah. So but, I guess that's a big deal now. What? Well, don't you think so? Being what? nude? Girl, what do you, you say? know how many times I've been naked? No, I, I don't. How yeah, many times? Yeah. What? I've been naked with coffee. Uh-huh. I've been naked with tea. Really? Uh-huh. I was naked smoking the cigars with Herbie. Uh-huh. I was this? naked. I was naked one time. Uh, I was naked. I was in a rush to get down to service one day. And I was naked under my apron doing communion. Oh, what? I was witnessing one time. One time I was naked doing missionary work. (laughs) Sister Odell. Disrespectful. Just amazing. Then as soon as a white lady do it, now it's uh, it's all over the thing. 
Yeah, well, that's would, that's, huh? would you do it for a, a commer TV commercial, and how much would it take for you to do it? I mean, they're paying, you know. Oh, well, I've done it for free, so. <laughs> yes. <you know. laughs> Quite naturally, I'll take a check. Yeah, my <laughs> money is no I'll tell you what, what, that ain't what you want. Because I get to you, I got some poses for you for paper. <laughs> Called posing for paper. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm afraid to ask, but what? You know, what we did a calendar one time. You know, uh, Martha Stewart used to be a model. And we did a calendar one time, you know. Uh-huh. It was and a Christian was calendar. It? Oh, thank oh, okay. God. Well, Praise that's the Lord. Christian, uh -huh. like I did. And I was all 12 months. Oh, every oh. month. You From were from January to December. Okay. Oh, okay. January, okay. I had on my nurse's guild outfit. Uh, yes, Tuesday, I wore my usher board outfit number one. Uh -huh. Wednesday, uh, except then uh, June, March, March, I had on my uh, missionary outfit. Mm. And then, uh, but then it got into the summer months that I wore less. Uh, oh. <laughs> Did wow. you wear a bikini ever? Girl, no, it's a Christian calendar. <laughs> I can't let nobody see all this. Oh, so a one this piece? Is, uh, oh, I ain't number temptation, piece, girl, back in the day. Oh, when I was there? Oh, you should have seen me. I had something <laughs> for you when I was coming kidding. up next. It is a prank phone call right after this. Thank you, Sister Odell. Bless <laughs> everything. Okay. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, as usual, it is my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is he needs to pace himself with everything. <laughs> We'll get into that in just a little bit. Whatever that everything, means, we'll find everything. out everything. Yes, everything. <laughs> but right now, it is time for today's prank phone call with Steve in for uh Yeah, the well, he, and it's Junior. in for time. He ain't here. I ain't got time for all this here. Here it is. <laughs> Truck driver exchange. Run it, cat. <laughs> That's your favorite part. Run it, cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Franklin. Yeah, this is Franklin. Hey, Franklin, how you doing? This is Roosevelt giving you a call from Human Resources. Human Resources? Hey, hey what's up, Roosevelt? What can I do for I, you? I, all right, man. I'm calling you from Human Resources, Global Transit Partners, where you, uh, been, uh, you've been you been driving trucks for us for uh, quite some time now. What are you, you six, six, six and a half years right now? Man, I'm eight and a half years. He's two years short, baby. <laughs> okay, eight and a half years. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Enjoying this road life, man. I love working with you guys, man. The benefits is there. I mean, um, I'm surprised to get a call from you. I mean, I mean, hope everything. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're on the road right now. You're probably driving. I wanted to give you a call. And uh, is this a bad time? Or can you talk right now? Yeah, I actually pulled over, man. I had to get something to eat, man. Okay, okay. So listen, let me tell you what's going on here with uh, with GTP. What we're doing is we are doing uh, some job exchange, and uh, some of the uh, drivers that we have uh, have been pulled out of a pool, and uh, some of you guys are going to be actually driving in different places now. So for the next six months, uh, within the next thirty days here, Franklin, you're going to be um, you're uh, you're going to be driving trucks in South Africa. And you're going to be Whoa, there uh, for for about six uh, for about six about six months. You're going to drive in South oh, Africa. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, listen, I ain't got no problem with South Africa, but y'all, y'all rather smart. I'm not going to no South Africa. I don't okay. know how to drive on the right hand side of the. Bro, man, I love Africans. I love everything about Africa, but I'm not going. I got a family out here in the United States of America, and you're trying to tell me I got to go to South Africa. Come on, man. What type of are you on, man? It, it, it's, it's, frankly, it's part of the job exchange is what it is, man. I okay. don't know what type you of only, job exchange I got going on, man. I don't want to be part of that job exchange. No, no, I'm not going to no damn South Africa. This is okay, not but, happening, but, but, man. This is just, listen to me, Franklin. Six months and you'll be back in the states. Okay, let me let me say what this. What type to you, of okay? National Geographic program y'all got going on, man? I don't know this, what y'all got going on that y'all calling me. I'm in the middle of the parking lot trying to eat me a cheeseburger from being on the road all night, and you talking about sending me to South Africa? What type of are you on, man? This some foreign exchange program y'all got going on? I'm not this, being this, part of this. You pulled my name out of pool like it was a. 
Susu to come tell me that I'm up to be driving in South Africa. This must be a joke. No. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not. So you're, no, this, is a good, this, is a good, this is a good thing, though, Franklin. I think you're going to like it. And, no, um, no, it's not you know, a good just, thing. What are you telling me is a good thing? I got wife and kids. What, am I, what, am, what the f*** are you talking about, South Africa? Do they even have f- roadways out there? I'm not going to f*** South Africa. Are you serious? I'm not hearing this correct, brother. I'm not hearing this correct, Mr. Roosevelt. I don't... South... What? Okay, My okay, kid plays just, baseball. Just, 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 are you telling me to go to South Africa? Are you serious? Okay, this Franklin, hear me out here, man. Let me, like, like I said, they, they, they pull names out of a pool, and uh, you and about 15 other guys are going to be going to different parts I don't of the world. F- what type of pool you pulled it in? You better put me back in the shallow part. you going to the deep end pool. Of, man, get the f- I'm not going to f- South Africa. I am not going to no. f- South okay. Africa. I don't, okay. I'm not okay. taking no malaria shots. I don't even got a passport. You want me to go to about that. Well, listen to me, Franklin. We're going to get you all the shots you need within the next 30 days, so you'll be set to go. You know, I'm not going we... to... I, I f*** around go to South Africa, and Trump won't let me back in the country because of y'all f***. I'll, I'll, I'll f*** quit right now. I'm not going to South Africa. It's a job exchange, Franklin. Okay, I let me say give this. A let, let, what let type me, of job but, exchange? So, what, so what, what are we exchanging? You bringing South Africans over here, and then you bringing me over there? Y'all, my wife is not going to be happy about this. I'm not going my my son plays okay, baseball. But can I, can I tell you this that your your salary actually doubles the six months while you're over there? Don't try to don't try to tell me about that what, in South African dollars or American dollars. What is it? What is it? It's Amer- you, it, it, it will be guys, American dollars. Uh, don't, don't try that. It will be American me, dollars, man. Franklin. Fra- Franklin, it will be American dollars. I'm not going to no South Africa. I am not going. Matter of fact, this is my last day in the Road. Y'all can come pick up this rig in the parking lot because I'm not going to South Africa. I don't care how you spell it or you say it. I ain't going. Okay. Okay, okay. Franklin, listen, it's, uh, you've been with the country, company eight, eight plus years, and I just got to tell you, you are obligated. You've been chosen out of a pool. All you have to do is six months. You're going to get paid double. Your family's going to be fine. You'll be back. And I ain't obligated months. to do shit, but drive a truck like I do every Day. I'm not going. You can't tell okay. me about being obligated. Let me tell you what I'm obligated to do. I'm obligated to throw this truck in fourth gear and drive right through your human resources window because I ain't going to South Africa. And I keep telling you that. I told you that since you got on the damn phone. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, 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 but let me ask you something, Franklin. You, you've been here for, with us for eight some years, man. You don't, you don't want to continue your job here with the company? I don't give a about this job right now trying to send me overseas like you're setting me up for something. I ain't going. Matter of fact, let me turn this truck on right now. I'm coming down to see you, Mr. Roosevelt. Okay, wait, 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 hold on now. Do you know um, Jermaine Rivers? Yeah, I know Rivers. But what do you got to do with it? Okay, let me go on and say this, Franklin. This right here that you're talking to is nephew Tommy, and your boy Rivers got me to prank phone call you. You just got pranked by your boy Jermaine Rivers. Oh, that <laughs> mother! <laughs> Wait till I see <laughs> Rivers. So you ain't no Roosevelt, and I ain't gotta go to South Africa. No, oh, my God. <laughs> oh man. This nephew Tommy, man, I be listening to y'all m****s on the road. Oh, Rivers, you want to play around? I f- when I put some sugar in your m- tank. All right, Franklin, before we leave, man, tell me this. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning m- Show. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's it. He wasn't going over there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, the family, got this guy. I got a family going on after driving a truck. <laughs> it's all good, man. Well, uh, let me do some dates. What you uh, got? Okay, oh, you, you got J-Road? You back on, you uh, back on let's stand Let's do Ready for Love. Uh, Friday Fridays. Friday nights. Watch me. Uh, on on own. On own. Uh, uh, Tommy will be back probably by mm-hmm. November. I've been asked to come back. Yes. Uh, me and Sid happened? was sitting on the golf course in the Bahamas. And, uh, uh-huh. That's exciting. 
Somebody said, hey, man, will we ever see the Kings again? And said, point it right at me. It's on me, really. But oh, is DL's it? Still, You're the yeah, holdup? Yeah, him and DL still out there. Oh, st- I, didn't, who, I didn't know it was you that was holding everything up. Yeah, I got to hold up, though, because I got to wait. Because if I do this one more, when I go on stage, they're going to cancel all my shit. Oh, Why oh, can't you oh. just control yourself? Yeah. Why do you have to get canceled? Do you no know more the Judge joy Steve? of being a stand-up? No, I don't. I is don't to know. say what you want to say. Yeah. To make pointed, comical remarks. But and what I think do is that. Funny. Doing it. Sid has you, a TV show. He doing yeah, it. you could do Sid that. Sid is different than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying something that's going to get me canceled. So I need to wait till I have I don't care cancellation money. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject. He needs to pace himself with everything. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click Submit Strawberry Letter, and we'll get your letter, and we'll maybe read it on the air, just like we're going to do this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. Do it. Strawberry Letter. Let's go. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. All All right. Thank you, Steve. (laughs) Subject, he needs to pace himself with everything, everything. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm 30, and my fiancé is 28 years old. We've been together two years, and he proposed three months ago. I've held out on intimacy with him until I got a commitment, and he did not have a problem with that. The night I got the ring, I gave in, and we had sex that night. It was not what I expected at all. I'd seen him naked a million times, and I knew what he was working with, but I had no idea if he knew what to do with it. Our first time was such a disappointment, and I was left unfulfilled. We laughed about him being excited because it was our first time. He's quick in everything he does, though. Since we met, I have teased him about eating and drinking too fast. We cannot share appetizers because he eats one after the other and I barely get any. If we're having wine, I may get one glass because he drinks it like water. I always have to encourage him to pace himself. I shouldn't have to be surprised when this same thing happened in the bedroom. I was brutally honest with him about the sex because I'm about to marry this man. I started having sex daily in hopes that he can get used to me and learn to pace himself. His doctor prescribed him something for mild anxiety. Now during sex, he will mumble the entire time or he will stop abruptly and ask me questions about how he's doing or how my day went. It is a total letdown every time. His doctor says it's a temporary problem and he will be fine once he's used to me. I am afraid this may not be fixable because it has been three months. If he can't figure out how to pace himself sexually, should I pace myself on getting married to him? Hmm. Well, I say yes, most definitely you should because sex is an integral part of marriage and intimacy and and it's a deal breaker in some instances. Uh, So if you have a chance to get it right or to fix it in your case, by all means do that. Uh, Pace yourself when it comes to the marriage. You don't want to cheat or end up in divorce because of it. And and I can't express the importance importance of that enough. I mean, it's important. It sounds like it's not so much about pacing, though. I'm getting that as it is about skill with him. Uh, Skill you can teach. You just have to be uh, patient. You got to practice like you've been doing for the last three months. And remember not to crush his ego. You said you were brutally honest with him. Um, You know, maybe, you know, come in a little softer, not not so 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 harsh and so brutal, as you called it. Uh, I'm assuming you really and truly love this man. uh, Otherwise, you wouldn't be marrying him. I think you want a relationship and you want it to work. Right. Uh, Well, here's where the work comes in. You know, you got to talk about this stuff outside of the bedroom. You really got to get to know each other and what you like. I say don't give up on him if you love him and and if this is what you really want. He can learn to pace himself, learn to eat slower and do everything slower. He can learn these uh, tricks. Uh, You know, this is fixable, but he's got to want to do better, too. And it sounds like he does. He sounds like he wants to please you. Steve? 
Well, I'm going to take a different approach here. This seems doomed. <laughs> I can fix the top half of your letter. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to suggest on the bottom half of the letter, you ain't going to like. So here we go. Okay. He needs to pace himself with everything. Mm-hmm. You 30, he 28. Been together two years. He proposed three months ago. I've held out on intimacy until him, until I got a commitment. He ain't have a problem with that. The night I got the ring, I gave in, and we had sex that night. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, two years of anticipation. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't quite what she expected. She'd seen him naked a million times, and she knew what he was working with, but had no idea if he knew what to do with it. Mm -hmm. first time was a huge disappointment. She said, I was left unfulfilled. We laughed about him being excited because it was our first time. He's quick in everything he does, though. So now let me fix this part of the letter. (laughs) Since we met, I've teased him about eating and drinking too fast. We can't share appetizers because he eats one after the other, and I barely get any. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have to start getting two appetizers. Fix it, Steve. Fix it. See, this part <laughs> I can help you with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all got to start getting two damn appetizers. <laughs> if we're having wine, I may get one glass before he drink because he drinks it like water. Mm-hmm. Here we go again. Two bottles of wine. Now, you can sit over there and finish here as fast as he wants, and you can keep mm-hmm. sipping yours like the lady you are. I've always tried to encourage him to pace himself. And so you shouldn't have been surprised when the same thing happened in the bedroom. And I was brutally honest with him about the sex because I'm about to marry this man. So what did you say to him? Hey, hey, hey. That's it? Hey. She crushed him. Excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) Uncle Ben, Minnie Rice. That's it? (laughs) Not Uncle Ben. Hey, Jack in the Box. (laughs) Oh, this is what we finna do. <laughs> Quick draw. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, hey, Hang hey, on. hey, hey, Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, <laughs> what you doing? Hang on. <laughs> Part two. All of your Steve's references response. is cartoon. Roadrunner. <laughs> what we doing now? Part two of Steve's response is coming up at 23 minutes after. Today's strawberry letter subject is he needs to pace himself with everything. We'll get back into it right after this gonna be quick too you're listening to the steve harvey morning show all right come on steve let's recap today's strawberry letter the subject he needs to pe- he needs to pace himself with everything she the married she's got a proposal from this 28 year old guy mm-hmm. she's 30 that she's held out her intimacy until she got a commitment he didn't have no problem he bought her a ring after two years seeing this man naked a hundred times they finally had sex she was disappointed because his pace was incredible. He just too fast, but it's just the way he lives his life. He eats too fast, he drinks too fast, they order hors d'oeuvres, she don't hardly get any because he eat one after another. I done suggested y'all need to start getting two hors d'oeuvres. Next, they order a bottle of wine, she only get one glass. Y'all gotta start ordering two bottles of wine, give him his own damn bottle. So you gonna be in a little while when it metabolism change, you're going to be married to a fat-ass alcoholic, look like to me, because he eating <laughs> wow. everything in front of him and he drinking everything and he ain't leaving, you know. He 28, his metabolism high right now, but as soon as it slow down, once again, you're going to be married to a fat-ass alcoholic. All right. And you've encouraged him to pace himself, so you shouldn't have been surprised when the same thing happened in the bedroom. I was mm. brutally honest with him about the sex because I'm about to marry this man. So you call him a bunch of names. Speedy Gonzalez, Road Runner, mm-hmm. stuff like that. How fast we gonna do this? And then uh, what you did was you started having sex with him daily Every in day. hopes that he can get used to you and learn to pace himself. Then his doctor prescribed mm-hmm. him something for mild anxiety. Now here we go, this is what the letter's about. Now during sex, he will mumble the entire time and or he will stop abruptly 
and ask me questions about how he's doing or how my day went. Right. What does that she mean? She said it's a total letdown. Well, let me tell you what that is. Okay. When a young boy can't control himself, mm-hmm. the best thing he do is try to stop. Oh. Change the subject. Get his mind on something else. Oh. Then okay. go back. Now he's going to count the downtime as time served. Mm. Let me give mm. you an example. So let's say y'all been at it for a strong two minutes. <laughs> two minutes? Okay. Strong two minutes. All he uh-huh. know, all he got is three. Okay. <laughs> wow. So he just started mumbling. The mumbling is what he's is- actually making himself talk about other things. Man, I got to fix my car today. I wonder how much gas prices is. Sure is nice. You know, it's Tuesday. It's all you can eat down at Waffle House. He, this is the stuff he's doing to try to occupy his mind. Then he'll stop and ask you how he's doing. Now, he's going to talk to you for five minutes, but he wants to count that five minutes with the two minutes, and then he's going to start back up. Oh, time but that, served. Now we mm-hmm. at seven minutes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because he's young and he's stupid. Now, the doctors say it's a temporary problem, and he'll be fine once he's used to me. Yeah. I'm afraid this may not be fixable because it's been three months. If he can't figure out how to pace himself sexually, should I pace myself on getting married to him? I think you should. Or Mm -hmm. else you're going to have to get used to the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Right. Because that's all it's been to be. Mm -hmm. Now, you ready? Yes. How much you ready for the answer? Yeah. Now, the part you ain't going to like. Okay. This is the comedian in me. <laughs> Ready Come on. what I think is wrong here? All right. Brace yourself. I think, I think her ass need to pick the pace up herself. Oh, okay. All you right. taking too damn long. He's we ain't too- got all day. He got to go <laughs> to work. You okay, taking too long. You need it. to pick your pace up. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, you we doing the three minutes. Let's go. Hep, 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 Let's do it. Got no time for you all this long like you finna be in here all day. You need to pick your pace up. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the problem. See, sometimes you have to speak speak up for weak men. Sometimes you have to give the inadequate man a voice. Okay. So and that's I, what you're doing right now. I'm speaking for the inadequate men out here. I'm <laughs> speaking for the men who don't have a voice. You know, all this, you the too voiceless. small. You know, all this here. You you, you too fast. How the hell are you taking too long? You too slow? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm too fast. Your ass is too slow. <laughs> you can't please me. Hell, hell, you ain't all that your damn self. <laughs> so they're just arguing now. You know, just all this here. You too small. Whoa, ho, ho. How about you too uh-uh, big? Uh-uh, How about uh-uh. that? See, now <laughs> I'm speaking for the man. So, so to all you men out there that mechanism. can't please a woman, mm. ask yourself, fellas, is that your damn job, really? <laughs> You're still I'm speaking, speaking for them? I'm speaking <laughs> for the broken man. The man that don't have a voice. You're their hero. She says, you too small. <laughs> Tell her she too big. <laughs> That's all. You got to fight back, brother. Yeah, now it's a fight in the bedroom. She talking about you can't last. Catch up. <laughs> All right, listen, please leave your comments on today's letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, we'll talk about Tom Brady's return to the NFL Are you serious, and uh, what Giselle has to say about it right after Uh-oh. this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, we talk about relationships a lot on this show. You know that. And our listeners are engaged. We have a voicemail message for you from a female listener in Atlanta. Okay, (laughs) take a listen. Hi, my name is Mo. I'm from Atlanta. And my question is, you know, lately I've been logging into social media. And it just seems like almost every other post is about how to pop life into a man, how to speak to him, 
how to cater to him, what to do, how to be submissive. Like there's all these tips on how to please a man, but no one talks about how to please a woman or how to speak life into your queen or how to protect your queen or how to provide. And I just want to know like, what's up with the tips for the ladies, you know, like for the men, I should say on how to treat women. Why is it always about how we cater to them? The things I think is so many women are engaged on social media, concerned about what it is with men, more so than men on social media, wondering about what it is with women. First of all, we can't figure you out. That's the one million yeah, dollar complex. question. Mm, the complex. person that could write a book on this is how women are would be a billionaire. He doesn't exist. Um, secondly, I think that there is too much comparison going on. And what I mean by that mm-hmm. is, you know, it's too much. Y'all talk more about them than you do us. Instead of the focus to be on every each individual that's on social media wanting to be in a, a committed relationship, your focus should be on you and what you want. As a young lady, I'll have to give, I'll let me empower you by telling you this. You are the prize. You are the gift. You are God's gift. Ain't no man the prize or God's gift. We're just not. Now, we have convinced you all that we are. (laughs) And you all have allowed men for a number of years now to act in disrespectful ways. And it's your response to those disrespectful ways that allow the disrespectful ways to continue. A woman does not have to accept bad behavior because bad behavior is prevalent. Hmm. It don't mean you have to take it. It don't mean you have to pass yours out because everybody else is passing theirs out. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's that's not the case, man. Come on, fast. And and the reason I'm going to tell you that Mm. is we treat women how you treat yourself. And we treat you how you treat you. So if you passing it out like potato chips, we gonna treat it like they laid mm-hmm. and we gonna eat more than just one. That's right. Can't the moment you treat one. yours special is mm-hmm. the moment we gonna have to be special to get it. And when we get it, it's gonna be special to us. But if it ain't special to you, we're not gonna treat it as special. So mm-hmm. get offline worrying about the comparison. And you have one comparison to make how a man treats you and the treatment you will accept or expect from a man. Get off social media. Stop trying to worry about who gonna treat you. The one will treat you the way you demand to be treated. And Steve, that's so important that you you use the word comparison because the other issue about uh, social media and comparison is we see these beautiful women on social media and we compare ourselves to them. It makes us insecure. It makes us feel desperate. Well, I don't look like her, so I'm not going to get a man. And all that, all that plays into how women feel about themselves these days because of what they see on social media. And, and, and you're exactly right. And it's because of these comparisons. You got to get out of that business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's like mm-hmm. being in the happy business based on what you have. If you keep looking at what everybody else got, you'll never be happy with where you are. That's because right. there's somebody always with more or further up the road. That's you got right. You to find contentment within yourself. That's right. We, we hope that helped you, Mo. Thanks for your call. Uh, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Halle Bailey's portrayal of Ariel in The Little Mermaid is spreading a much-needed dose of black girl magic to the next generation of young girls. We know, especially today, that representation is everything. Uh, A teaser for the live-action adaptation of the classic Disney animated film was released last week, featuring Halle Bailey as the iconic red-headed mermaid. And the remake is expected to be in theaters in May 2023. Now, you know... We love it, and we're happy for Halle Bailey. But there, she got a lot of backlash because people didn't want to see, you know, a, a young black woman playing this role. But uh, she handled it like the princess, like the queen that she is, the young queen that she is. 
And I, I'm just so happy because, like I said, representation is everything, Steve. Everything. You know, for our young girls. It's imperative that this type of thing happen. Mm -hmm. I was in a discussion with a white guy one time, and he asked me, he said, Steve, why, why is it that blacks feel as though they should have black dolls and black G.I. Joes and stuff? He said, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I said, because if your children have things to play with that look like them, you don't think our children should have things to play with that look like them? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, but, you know, you can just play with the ones that we already have. I said, so could you. You can right. play with the ones we going to make. I get tight. I'm not the good person yeah. to have a conversation with. Uh -huh. That's right. So congratulations again to Halle Bailey as Ariel in The Little Mermaid. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Would You Rather. All right, Steve, get ready. Would you rather eat everything with your fingers or would you rather have it pureed? Everything you eat be pureed, pureed. No, no, I mean with my what? hands. Yeah. Oh. I've been, I've been, I've, I've, Baby I've, food. Over, I've been at people's houses. Uh -huh. I've eaten at uh, some Muslims' houses mm -hmm. and they, they eat with their hands. I could do that. Uh-huh. Just make oh, you're sure not you watch them. Mouth. You're not finna do that. <laughs> That's like baby food, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't want no pureed steak. I don't know what you're doing right here. Pureed? My steak. That, that ain't finna happen. You're not gonna drink it? <laughs> no. All right. All right. This this is a good one for you. Uh, <clears throat> would you rather always say the first thing, the first thing that comes to your mind, or just never speak at all? Oh, I'm just gonna give me a. Here it yeah. is. Yeah, that in not speaking face. at all, that ain't going to work for me. I'd rather <laughs> you go on and get it and take this one in the face and go somewhere and have to deal with it. I know you're going to have to go to therapy. <laughs> but you asked show, me not to say nothing at all? Yeah. On this oh, show, you, no. you censor yourself sometimes on this show. Yeah, sometimes. but if I didn't have to, though, <laughs> it'd be a much better show. Right, right. All right. Would you rather your you pack your luggage, you pack luggage for your mate, or would you rather your mate pack for you? Which one? Oh hell, hmm. I rather I rather Marjorie pack for me. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Then I you sure pack for her. Right. Hell no, I'm not gonna get it right. Well, I mean, you just you would just pack what you wanted her to wear, right? That's not gonna work. <laughs> I don't want to wear that. <laughs> Why would you pick you that for that? Because <laughs> baby, why I is just everything in here women. short? Okay. <laughs> what? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Where are my pants? Why is it just tops? <laughs> How come it, Steve? Ain't no panties in here. <laughs> where, where are my bras? <laughs> what? What you need that for? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Would you, <laughs> moving on, would you rather Usher in concert or a Jodeci concert? Which one? Oh, Usher, an Usher concert or a Jodeci? Usher all day. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sit around the Jodeci fans. That's my problem. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit around Usher's people. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's today's round of Would You Rather. <laughs> Keep slipping yeah. away from me. We'll be back yeah. with closing in 49 minutes after, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, our last break of the day. Uh, it's been a good day, this hump day Wednesday. <laughs> hump day. Remember that commercial with the hump camel? Day. That used to be your favorite. <laughs> that used to be your favorite. You know which one, which commercial, right before we get to your closing, is my favorite right now? I think it's an Amazon commercial where the woman talks to her daughter. Have you seen that one? About safe spending. She said, Mom, you've been reading my diary. And then the last question they get to the little girl look at her mom and say, So, Mom, so what is bang for your buck? Yes. Said, right. You're, they fool you because you really think they're going to talk about safe sex, but it's mm -hmm. about safe spending. I love it. 
I love that. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, congratulations again to all the Emmy winners. Um, Cheryl Lee Ralph with, with her inspirational speech about never giving up and dreams coming true. You talk so much about that, Steve. You really do. And and she's living it. You know, she's living her dream. She won, of course, for Abbott Elementary. She plays a teacher on that show. And Cheryl's been in the business for so long. We're just so happy for her and that speech and the song, everything. It was greatness. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, uh, you something, Cheryl. Okay. Go ahead. Other than Morgan Friedman. Oh, yes. You cannot pick Morgan Friedman. You cannot pick Denzel Washington, and you cannot oh. pick Idris Elba. Okay, well, I, I'm leaving. What? <laughs> okay, what? Who else? But you have to pick uh-huh. a celebrity crush. Who oh. is the celebrity crush? That's easy. Blair Underwood. That's easy. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's easy. It's- yeah, Blair Underwood. I love Blair. He's a great actor. I, I just love him. Okay, Humanitarian. Shirley, we don't, this is our closing because we've never done okay. this. Okay. It's kind of like a truth or dare. Okay. You'll ask me something I have to answer, and i ask you something you have to answer. All right. All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. B- besides Marjorie, your Hollywood crush. <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth? Uh huh. Shirley yes. Ralph. I've always thought. She wow. Was yeah. <laughs> Shirley Ralph. I've always thought she was black. Yeah. She, and she really is. Didn't she yeah. coin that term, Jamaican? I think she started saying that because oh, she was know. from. Yeah, I think she did a long time ago. But she used to just be such a, a, a one of our favorite guests when we had the show yeah. only in LA when she started her Diva Simply yeah. Singing. Okay, here we go. Right, let's skip all that. Okay. Let's get to these. Questions. Okay. Go ahead. How much money? What's mm-hmm. the bare minimum money you would take to walk away from everything you do? Uh, I'm going to take a page out of your book, Steve. I like this number, $20 million. Would you walk away for 10 Yeah, I would. Uh-huh. See, I said bare minimum. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Would you walk uh- away for five with $5 million? Wait, what? Say it again now. Say that again. Girl, I ain't got to say that again. You no, no, no. You said, would you walk away with would five Would you walk four, away five? for five million? Uh, five million cash, tax-free, would you leave? Yes. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. And that's it. That's it. No, no. No, no. Here we go. No. <laughs> 2.5 million cash, tax-free, do you walk away? I... I got it. I think five is my my number. I think five is my number. <laughs> but wh- why I'm are you are you handing out time. millions? <laughs> you uh, handing out you, millions. Let me tell you something. Somebody give you two point five at one time. Think about what to you wh- make a year and how long yeah. it would take you to make that. And you can get that in one lump sum. Bye. To walk away. Okay. All right. I'm gonna listen to you on that one. I'll just have to get See, a financial See, I make good planner. money. Yeah. But if you give me. A hundred mil. Okay, I'm gone. Can I ask you? Yeah. <laughs> how much would it take for you to walk away from everything? Hundred mil. Re- a hundred the- mil. Walk right up out of here. Fifty million tax free, bare minimum. Fifty million tax free. Uh huh. Uh huh. Nah, see, tax free. Let me see. Tax free now. Okay. You've already paid your taxes and everything. That's already taken care of. 50 mil. No, I can't go. <laughs> but you you see why I struggle with two and a half? <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> uh-uh. You can't uh-huh. walk away from $50 million, Steve. Get no, out of here. No, at one, at one, walk away from everything? Yes, no. everything. No, I can't. At 65, you can't. I two can't. years away from r- normal retirement age. I'm telling Let's you right see. now, the number is 100 million. 100 million cash, tax free. Okay, well, Bye. I have 50 million, and you're st- you're staying for you're you're staying and won't take the 50 million. No, because I'm go. What I'm gonna leave on the table, Shirley, that I can make in a year, mm-hmm. and then I'm out, and then the following year, I, I can't I can't do it. <sighs> 
Okay. Go ahead. I'm listening. If you knew when the end would be, <laughs> would you still give that same answer? If you just happen to know. I know we don't know. I got all that. Hell no. If I found out that the end was next week. Uh-huh. You still wouldn't leave for 50? Hell yeah. We wouldn't even be talking right now. Okay, thank you. I, I'll hurry up and start doing the things I've always wanted to do. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, y'all, that's it for today. Y'all, enjoy your day today. Talk to God today. He'd love to hear from you.